This show is known for its comedy. We are going down a dark path. As usual. It's okay. Wiping up the rear. This will be like the time I just had to stare at the pile of money and keep going while the cameras rolled. Uh, let's turn into that kind of show. But he's in bed again with the book. And a bit of a swoon and a feel coming around. We'll make sure you get more hand time. What are we doing here? Not going to be ready, but I'm ready. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us under the library. We are an actual play, homebrew Call of Cthulhu podcast written by our keeper. We are script-free, editing light, and build our story collaboratively in the moment. If you like what we do on this show and would like to support us, head over to underthelibrary.com slash support and pick up our module. It's called The Snake's Oil and is set in season one of this very show. Again, that's underthelibrary.com slash support. My name's Arthur. I am playing Buddy. We have a full house again tonight. So I'm here with Emily as Colette, Wayne as Sister B, Scott playing Johnny, and Rick as Sam Wagoneer. As always, our keeper is Michael. Michael, the show's all yours. Hey, thanks, Art. Under the Library is a horror tabletop role-playing game set in the Call of Cthulhu universe with horror and other unsettling imagery. We feature mature themes played by immature people. Not safe for Scott is your signal. The following information will be graphic. If you're concerned, skip ahead, but stick with us. And on that note, if you're tired of Soylent Green and want to try Violet, you're probably in the right place. So with that, I'll turn it over to Emily for last episode's recap. All right. So last week, Eddie, Colette, and Amanda exchanged introductions, although Colette was distrustful initially and gave her alias. As they talked, Buddy passed by the open door and Colette rushed after him, followed by Eddie and Amanda. The four arrived in the dining car to find Buddy examining the strange hole in the window. And then Sam entered to offer a round of shots. He explained that he gave the whiskey to all the staff in the prep car, an experiment to see if their heads exploded. And he wants to do the same here. No one accepted his drink, however. And as Johnny and Sam argued, Buddy slipped out followed by Colette and Amanda. Still on the cargo train, Sister B lowered herself into the next car among the jostling bodies. She discovered that they were hanging from the ceiling by cords attached to their backs. She then heard a Russian accented voice ask, Apricot, is that you? That was not a Russian accent, I'm sorry. But she followed the sound towards the front of the car to find a hanging body with her brother Richard's face. In her shock, she swooned, and the episode came to a close as she fell to the ground and was knocked unconscious. Apricot, is that you? Thank it wasn't, you. It wasn't ever specified as you were just Eastern European, you know? Oh, I'm sorry. My um. Mistake. You know, I had the, I, I, as we were like rolling there, I almost punted with, if you've ever wondered what Eeyore's like on cocaine, but then I was <laughs> like, <laughs> see that might have worked Save better. that one. Yeah, save that one. <laughs> Too late. Spoiler Where's alert. <laughs> Where's the honey poop? Where's the honey? <laughs> so maybe I should have, I was like, oh my God, if I punt with that one though, they're all going to like be like, we, ha-. so anyway. <laughs> we workshopped the other one. <laughs> I know, right? We worked hard for that one. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to we're going to change things up a little bit this week. We're going to start with Buddy, uh, see where this goes, and then I might explain a little bit more about uh, where I'm going to drop y'all. And uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. But we'll start off with Buddy and see what he's about to do. OK, so um Buddy had turned away from this really stressful scene in the dining car with Sam um, trying to get everyone to um, take a shot of whiskey. When he turned, um, he went out of that car, and I don't know if I've, I've mentioned, I have mentioned this, I don't know if it's things that people remember, but Buddy, when he was a kid, um, was a big comic book fan, oh, super yeah, yeah, into yeah. comic books. Um, and when he 
when things get stressful for him, those images pop back into his head. Uh, he is really struggling right now. He's very much on the edge. And he doesn't know what which way to go. He has a number of competing thoughts as to what's right and what's wrong. And as he's walking away from the dining car, he's seeing comic book flashes of images of memories. So uh, one image is um, uh, Eddie in the theater turning and looking at the back of his leg, saying that, that a rat is running up his leg. So he's, he's seeing it, a, a comic book drawn image of Eddie turned and, and looking back at his own leg um, it, with the little speech bubble saying something about the rat. And then another image of Eddie and Buddy in a diner, again, drawn like a comic book, the two of them sitting at a table and Eddie pushing a plate of food away from him. He's seeing another comic book image of a car in the distance and Lana being pushed into the back of the car. And now he's walking faster and faster and he's gotten to the next car as he gets into that, you know, goes through the doors into the next car. He's, he's walking faster and starting to jog. He sees another image of a portal, a purple portal in a cave tunnel that was under the mechanic shop. Um, out in the desert. He sees another comic book image of Sam holding out a glass of whiskey facing him. Now he's in another car and now he's running. He's really starting to freak out. And he sees another comic book image of a profile of Sam and Johnny Dante. Johnny's holding a glass of whiskey and his head has exploded. So now he's into the realm of this thing. Did it happen? Did it not happen? But this is what he thinks could happen. And now he's just dead sprinting for his car. He sees another comic book image of Richard's head exploding. He never saw that. He's only heard stories about it. He sees another comic book image of Amanda with no head, blood everywhere. Another image of Colette and her head having exploded. And now he bursts into his cabin, slams the door, locks it. I assume there's a little pull down shade. Okay, yep. If there is, he would pull that down, sprints to the other side of the car, grabs his bag that was covering the book, throws it across the cabin, drops to his knees on the floor, picks up the book, and opens it. Ooh. All right, and make a quick pal roll with that. Okay. Oh, that's a fail. <laughs> I, saw, okay. I saw a 90 and got really worried. <laughs> okay. But the other tell one's a zero. Me, tell me Buddy's greatest vision of himself. Okay, that that's actually pretty easy. Um, uh, buddy, now this I, I don't like think if this he exists. Could be anything, not like a yeah, rea- yeah. Like if if, if, if he could that. be anything, so he is. Um, he wants to help the little guy. So he went into the army to be a part of something good to help people who can't help themselves. So. He, he doesn't want glory. He doesn't want anybody to know about it. He just wants to stop bullies from being bullies and help people who are getting bullied because he got bullied okay. all his life and was never able to help himself. So he thought that going into the army and becoming stronger and having a group around him that had a similar goal could help him get to a point where he could actually do some real good for real people. Okay. And so as as Buddy opens the book, there's an image in the book of Buddy and he's ripped, right? Like just <laughs> absolutely so strong. And uh there's a kid on his back, like um 
getting a piggyback ride and he's it, there's a speech bubble out of out of there that says you know thank you mr buddy um i i can't believe you saved me you came just in the nick of time and what happens for buddy uh, is as he's sitting there the book unfolds in a comic book essentially where he's the hero of it and it shows him doing all these great things and by proxy it pulls him in uh minutes just fall away as as buddy and, and feel free if there's some scenes here that you think buddy but but the 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 essence here is, is that the book really um draws buddy in and shows him performing all these incredible feats of kindness and bravery is there an interaction between buddy and the book is there any is there any more vocalization or is it just he's sucked into this real life comic book so the the interaction is unless well i i should ask you this if buddy talks to the book yeah. tell me what he says okay but otherwise as buddy envisions these panels they almost start drawing themselves right and so as he sees himself saving the kid he's like wow wouldn't it be great to pull people out of a burning building for instance and then that next panel is what gets manifested okay so um the reason that buddy picked up the book is because he had a question like a specific okay. question to I ask the book if he's sucked okay. into this and is and is no longer able to remember that question and he's sort of you know along for the ride that's fine um but if he's able to sort of think clearly enough he does have a question about the situation that's unfolding right now okay uh that's yeah i you go ahead and ask it but all okay. i would say is that it probably occurs like an hour or two or maybe even three oh, hours Jesus. later okay okay so the question he would ask is is sam right is this what's happening to people and and the book whispers back to you make a sand roll on that <laughs> Shocking. Oh, uh, no, that's a fail. Okay. And uh, so take three points of sand damage for being okay. absorbed mm -hmm. kind of into the book. Mm -hmm. And it whispers back to you and it says, What do you mean by right, buddy? What do you think? Sam thinks he he thinks that that there's there's, there's some kind of some kind of sickness that that's spreading among people when when they when they touch the blood of other people and that it makes their heads explode when they drink alcohol and and that that's why Eddie exploded did did Sam give Eddie alcohol cuz i i think I think Sam I saw Eddie drinking beer and Sam was right there. Sam didn't kill Eddie. It, is that what you're worried about? Is but is is he right about everything else? Is that is that what killed Richard and is that going to kill other people on the train? What what killed Richard is other people, buddy. Bad people. Nobody else on the train has to die today. But how but how did their how did their heads explode? Is, is Sam right well, about how their heads exploded? Did did those bad people infect them with, with what Sam thinks they have? Buddy, their heads explode and it draws out these really complex pictures in the book. It doesn't say anything. It starts making these forms. And uh, buddy, make an intelligence roll. It'd have to be a really difficult one, but okay. give you a shot at it. No. Okay. And so you're not able to recognize these forms that are drawn in the book, but there's these really um, 
complex patterns and they're absolutely gorgeous and you spend more and more time kind of engaged with them so it never answers you verbally mm -hmm. just visually cool yeah. all right and so here's what i think we're going to do um you can call it keeper fatigue but um <laughs> I, if we push if we push forward in the train I think we're going to be stuck in the train and there's really, there's not a ton left to investigate unless y'all want to shoot at trees from train windows or each other, um, which doesn't sound like yes. much fun either. <laughs> um, so I, I have uh, a little surprise uh, newspaper article hmm. that might have been written by somebody on the train. <laughs> <clears throat> Why, hello, my friends in Dallas. My strangest journey continues out west, and while the case of the cows is still open and oozing fresh in my memory, I must say this train ride has been a possibly more bizarre experience. You've already seen my column about the exploding man, and while his insides were quite astir, the train itself was filled with the most interesting curiosities. Loudest of them all was an FBI man who I am quite sure fancies me. He's always telling me his name like I could ever forget. I swoon with his coming and goings and was nervous as I thought he might depart in Colorado with the body. However, it appears he journeys north with us and may stay on until our arrival in New Bloodstone. Louder, brasher, and more assertive than a bull after a heated cow has been a cattle rancher convinced that whiskey can reveal illness. I've seen some wild doctors in my time, but this man raved and ranted around the train, spilling good drink and blustering about whether we had headaches until, frankly, we all had one. <laughs> I have made a friend, though, one who seems connected to these two, though Lord knows why. She's cautious, though, and I like that in a fellow traveler, one who seems resourceful and pays attention. It saved my life more than once, and I feel like an adventure with her will be fun. And finally, there's one who's become more brooding as the train goes north. He started quite amiably, but he makes up his this bizarre quartet and has become quite withdrawn with moments of joy that seemed contrived to fit in. It's exactly what I look for. Mysterious circumstances are afoot, and as we forge ahead to New Bloodstone, I smell adventure in the air. Never you fear. Madam Amanda will risk life and limb for your good story but always return unscathed to push you further to the edge of your seat until next week, dot, dot, dot. And so this would be a column in a newspaper that none of you would ever see, but I think kind of maybe surmises where we would, we would leave these characters as we time dash forward. Let's say, how long would it take to uh, get off this train? A week. I was thinking a couple, couple of days, but sure. I was thinking like three, four days. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. Let's, Let's call it three or four days then. Sure. So wait, All right. <clears throat> the newspaper article is not canon or not like we don't know it. You don't know it. Well, fuck. <laughs> That's not a nice thing to do to your players. <laughs> <laughs> You're finally famous, <sighs> but you don't know. Yeah. Okay. So, so as far as Colette is concerned, Amanda's just who she says she is. It's yeah, pretty, it's pretty great. Michael, well, make I hold a, this against you. It's okay. I, I, <laughs> if that's all you hold against me after all of this, I'm doing pretty well, honestly. Okay. Let's make a. I, I'll give you this. Make an intelligence roll because Colleen or Colette's pretty savvy. Um, that is that is one from being a hard success. So I'm going to burn a luck. Perfect. So uh, during the three to four days that have transpired on your way to New Bloodstone, uh, you have all obviously been conversing this whole time. Um, there's certainly some strange things, right? Like I think buddies, maybe uh, uh, what's that word when you pull yourself away from others? Hermit withdrawn. Withdrawal. Thank you. 
<laughs> buddy's withdrawal uh it wouldn't be it doesn't have to be magnified you you don't like i'm not trying to project onto buddy's character but his withdrawal occasionally into the book is probably going to be noticed at least that he's missing not necessarily that it, he's in the book um sam contributing or continuing to try and keep amos happy and amos probably running around the train so so there's going to be a little more lightning as the body was unloaded in colorado right i'm imagining johnny uh would unload the body somewhere with the fbi offices in colorado with all the evidence he's collected and um but as the trains pushed further north uh colette you've become ever more suspicious about who amanda has presented herself to you to be okay is that fair that is fair uh, enough that with that hard role, uh, you don't believe she's who she says she is. Okay. I have nothing else to hold against you. Okay. Art, Art just said that. <laughs> did, buddies. Did, did, did. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> what? Wow. Nothing. Did, 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 did. It wasn't public information. I'm just checking it. So, um, but we'll we're gonna we're gonna cut over to sister b and then we'll get back to this train we'll give it a few more y'all i want to give you all a few minutes to think about your characters uh the the knowledge they'll be arriving with in new bloodstone and those kinds of dynamics and so i'll cut over to sister b for a moment and um sister b uh you're waking and your head's pounding and you're you're quite confused for a moment what what do you as, as you're blinking you're seeing the swaying of the bodies above you ah okay uh, hmm and and you're confused so i think that's an opportunity for sister b to tell me what sister b is thinking or seeing Oh, so if she's lying down. She's uh, seeing swaying, and perhaps the swaying, uh, yes, the swaying of these limbs and stuff of these bodies is is more like tree limbs swaying. And so she has the sense that she's lying in long grass, in uh, in an orchard, uh, when she's younger, and looking up and seeing the the swaying of the branches. And there's a wind sound going by, and she hears that behind her, and a bit of a swoon and a feel coming around her. But she feels uh, comfortable. Um, and she realizes she may have fallen down and hit her head on a tree because she's lying next to a tree, thinks she thinks, uh, a fruit tree in the uh, family orchard when she was perhaps younger. And then uh, the pieces would start coming together if she looks around, like not like after you faint and you look around and pieces would slowly come into place. The branches are not branches. And then this yawning feeling behind her of this door that's open would be a sense of space of uh, whooshing by and then movement the movement would be lie the sense of lying on the ground and then she would have a sense of uh where she was and i'm not sure she would uh quickly or or put together where she is uh with the conk on her head perhaps she's still a little disoriented and, and is not sure okay and um make a make a luck roll okay Ooh, her luck's getting lower. Not close. Okay. And have you had a sand roll lately? Oh, yeah. She lost a bunch last okay. time. Okay. All right. The As she's thinking about all of those things, she she's noticing that the rate of the trees kind of flashing the light through the, the rail car mm -hmm. has slowed significantly because remember she had the door open is that right mm -hmm. yep yep that was the yeah. sense of a space behind her right and so it slowed significantly and she hears a, a voice from outside yell hey hey the door on this one's open sound the alarm mm. and then there's voices further down there's lots of yelling going on uh, but the train's still moving at a pretty good clip. Okay. 
So it's still uh, moving, but like not, you know. Yeah. So give her. I was gonna say this would be a mental resilience thing. So give her. Uh, could perhaps give her a chance for a power roll to start putting pieces together. Yeah. yeah sure. Then, sure. Let's let's do that. Oh my God, she gets a hard success on that. So the okay. voice is much like any voices, and then and it's in like an alarm, and so she has a thing in her body where she's generally on guard, and her body just snaps too, and she pulls her herself together, if not all her faculties, but her body. Uh, she sits up and she realizes she has a huge pain, and does put her hand on the back of her head where you rub it, and then she checks this, her palm to see if there's blood. Um, and, and then uh, it's dried. Uh, she realizes she's been knocked out. Ah. possibly a really long time. So that's as important for her. And she goes, oh, goodness. And then she would uh, rub it again. And then she would uh, push herself to stand up. And her first, uh, one of the first things she would do is, where does my suitcase? And her suitcase was, uh... where was her suitcase? I believe it's tied on the to the floor, top of the train. I thought it was yeah. tied oh, to the top it? of the train. It's yeah. a tied to the top oh, of the is. train. Okay. Yes. When thought. she came over. Yep. So it's on top of this car. And so okay. that would be, the first thing she would want to do, she heard these voices. When she has alarm, the suitcase for her is her is her uh, safety blanket, like Linus has his safety blanket. And as she stands up, she's wobbly and hungry. She's both of those things because it's it's been quite some time. Some she co- realizes, oh, I'm going to eat. Oh, and then she looks around, and I, this is where I think she uh, assisted to be would gather herself. And she looks at these figures that are hanging with the wires and such out of them and limbs and all this and they're not complete figures but they're not human figures and then she remembers the voice the one that said apricot is that you and she looks around to the far corner where that came from and she goes you know with the car moving and back and forth and balancing balancing herself and she if she has to reach over she holds on to one of the figures that's dangling for for balance if she has to and she makes her way over to that figure that said apricot and the one that had richard's face and she suddenly see feels the need to see if it was real she wants to go over to it and look and even touch it okay and as she's touching it she hears and the alarm in the distance is going Mm -hmm. off and we'll ah. cut from there to uh, little Amos running up and down the back of the train, screaming uh, to nobody in particular, are we here? Are we here? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I think we're here. This is it. This is it. I can't wait for this. We're in New Bloodstone. Oh, my God. We're here. Oh, we are, little Amos. And what are we going to do first? You hungry? You want to get out there and start exploring? Oh, and wow. I kind of turn and I smile to, to to Cheryl at the same time as I say that and give a little bit of a wink. So, uh, and, and he's, I want to do everything. And he's just kind of running up and down. Uh, and and any of you characters can, you know, wherever you kind of are in the vicinity, just jump in. The train is definitely approaching a town. Uh, it's It's slowing down. And, you know, you feel the momentum. You'd probably all be packing up somewhat, I would imagine, or having already packed up. And uh, as you feel the train, you know, it's probably got like it's within a mile or two of the of the city. Can I just ask one question to Art about Mm -hmm. Buddy? Yep. So would you have still been like, uh, would you still have been okay with me staying in our compartment? Or would you have been so standoffish and protective of the book that you would have pushed me away entirely? Um, no, I th- I think that I if were we staying in the same compartment, or I thought we had separate yeah the three of us the three of us were okay fine yeah um, yeah I would have been okay with that um, but um, uh, Michael is it safe to assume that Buddy could have at some point found um, a, a a bag like a sh- you know a satchel kind of over the shoulder yeah. bag yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and some sort he, of other he could have book just taken, he could have just taken one of eddie's right okay great yeah um and could he have found another book like a more innocent book that he could then you know put the one book inside the other book so make a make a spot hidden okay i've failed three rolls so far tonight so <laughs> what could go wrong oh no 
Oh, that was really close. I did not see it, but that is a 94. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, uh, I've rolled two 90s, yeah. a 90 and a 94 out of four rolls. It's going well. But can Buddy please just make it to New Bloodstone? <laughs> right. So we're, um, only, we're only a mile away. What could possibly go wrong? Right. Yeah. Ask me to roll uh, once or twice more. We'll find out. So you you found a book, but it's not like kind of small and convenient. It's rather okay. large. Like let's say it's maybe an atlas. Like an atlas. Like yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so is it the have... atlas from Richard's house that had New Bloodstone with all the notes in it, or Bloodstone? Just regular Bloodstone. It was regular Bloodstone. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would prefer it not be because Buddy would like no, it to be innocuous. Yeah, no, it's just big. Like, yeah, it's not right. That, that's the only, it's totally fine. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, Buddy is really doing his best to hide the book and hide any um, talk of the book. Um, he's really trying to pretend that it's not a thing, but every second he gets, he's looking in the book. Okay. So it's safe to say that a few times in these last few days, Colette would have tried to talk to you about the book and you would have put her off and she wouldn't have pushed too hard. Yep. Yep. Okay. He's kind of like a screenager with the thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Every time well, Colette leaves, we the, leaves the compartment, but he's got the book open. Yeah. Then I guess Colette would have spent a lot of time with Amanda. Okay. Feeling uncomfortable in the compartment. <laughs> Okay. But he's in bed again with the book. <laughs> <laughs> he is a young man. Uh, Johnny, how about you? So I think I've been spending the time going through uh, Eddie's notes in particular. Okay. So, you know, it, I would just sort of be holed up, you know, definitely spend some time trying to get to know Colette, trying to, you know, bury the hatchet with Sam, um, get to know Buddy. So just trying to sort of build some connections because I know they're all connected to the investigation from the notes from Eddie. Um, you know, hopefully there's some level of success there, but I'm also just spending all my time really getting to know the notes and trying to formulate a plan for when we get to Bloodstone, what some of the things that we might want to do. So okay. in that case, could we do a quick scene? Would that be okay, Michael? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right before that, uh, Johnny, give me an edgy roll. It you roll it. Uh, let's see what you find out out of Eddie's notes. Oh, sh I missed it by two. Okay, you, that's so what luck's you... for. <laughs> I don't. It's just it can't remember, it, my luck is fifty. Is that sort of good or bad, or is that like it's higher than mine? And I just bit, burnt one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean you're only using two to to make that roll. Right. You're you're fine. I I mean, if I'm just being honest here, we'll we'll say that. Sure, I'll I, I'll leave it up to you. If you burn the lock, we'll, we'll I can we'll figure out a way to make it worth it. But that's up to you. No, it it's okay. I'll okay. I have a feeling I'm going to need it when we get to Bloodstone. Is that... Okay. So you you have we'll we'll call it like pretty good transfer because Eddie kept up with you along the investigation anyway. So you have a, you, you yeah. know, uh, of what he was following and things he was keeping up with. But the part I'm more interested in right here is those last few days uh, and what he wrote down in his notes, but all he, all that you can really find in those last few days in those notes is uh that they found some objects at the crime scene and he's curious to investigate them. But uh, the page that says what those objects were, where he would have itemized them is missing. Okay. So Wait, the house crime on... scene? Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please. Okay. So depending on when I read that, that's one of the things that I would want to talk to Colette about and talk to Buddy about. Well, okay. that's so convenient because that's what I wanted our scene to be about. Oh, look at that. It's Michael, can we do a scene? Y'all go. Y'all take this and show. Scene. So knowing that you were looking through Eddie's notes, I would have asked if you had found the drawings that I made and if not offered to redraw for you as well as I could from my memory. So 
I think that I could provide at least some idea of what was there. Did he have my notes, my pictures, my floor plans and such, Michael? Yeah, there's no reason for those to be okay. missing. If Well, yeah, did you give them to him? Well, Eddie, they I didn't take them out of the room. I came over to Eddie and Buddy's room and showed them the drawings, and then they kept them. Okay. Yeah, I mean they're they're with you on the train. Like it's you're it's just kind of semantics on who had them, right? You either you brought them or Eddie Eddie brought Eddie them. brought so them. somebody okay, okay then Eddie brought them. That's fine. And then uh, in that case, I would also pull the ring out of my pocket and offer it to Johnny, and say that this is what I found behind the house before I went inside while the others weren't around. Oh, he had, he had a note saying that, that there were some things that, that, that were found, but he didn't know what they were. I was going to ask you about them. Uh, this is, so you think the ring is I one know. of those things that, that he found oh, or things. you guys found? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I found it. I showed it to him. So he would have known about it. Yeah. He probably would have. It's weird. Like usually he keeps really good notes. So in the whole time, his notes were perfect. And then the last couple of days, it's like the notes just fell off. It's, you can tell, I could tell he just, he was, he was changing. It, he well, just, that, he wasn't the, I've known him forever. I've known him since he was a rook and he was just always thorough with everything. And his last little bit, it's not the same guy that I knew. You saw the book he had, right? I, I barely saw it. It disappeared and I haven't seen it since. Well, Buddy has it now, and he maybe. hasn't been talking to me. You think it's the book? Because, I don't know, maybe I'm a simple guy, but it's a book. What could a book do? Well, I don't know. I know that Buddy thinks, he said he thought it killed Eddie. He said he thought the book killed him, and I tried to convince him otherwise, mm. but I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on with him because he won't talk to me. Yeah, maybe maybe we should find some time to talk. Not now. It seems like he's not doing too well. But all I know is... Well, that's all the more was... reason to talk to him. I if, think if this he'll... is why he's not doing well. If he'll talk to us, yeah. I mean, I'd love to. I know, you know, my the description of him from Eddie, I thought I was going to show up and he was going to be ready to go and it was going to be, you know, all of us working together. And now with Eddie gone, I think it sort of broke him. So... I just that what I worry about is that he's just not doing good, and it's hard to come back sometimes. When uh, when Eddie lost his first partner, it took him a good long time to get back out in the field. So if Buddy's never lost someone like this before, a partner, it could take a long time for him to recover. I mean, yeah, it could be the book, but it could just be the trauma of it. I don't. I mean, honestly, I've only known him for a few months. I just know that this isn't the Buddy I met. I know, and it's not the Eddie. It's maybe we got to look into this book because these are two people that we both knew, and they changed. They changed. So what do we, I don't even? Here's the part that I'm still trying to get. When we get into Bloodstone, I thought I when I looked through Eddie's stuff, I was going to know what his next move was. He was a planner. He had three, four steps planned out. Right, that's what he did. And I looked through his notes. I don't see where he was going next. I just know he wanted to go to Bloodstone, but he didn't tell me what he was going to do when he got there. He didn't give me that picture. And I just, I don't know what to do with that because I was looking for him. He's hes the agent on the case. He's the one that knew what to do next. All I know is I got to go to Bloodstone and I don't even know what I got to do when I get there. I'm not the one to ask about that. I would have gone anywhere to get out of Los Alamos. Yeah, it sounds like a bad place. Is then maybe this is something else we can get from Buddy because I'm hoping he and Buddy at least had the conversations about it. That's you they got a did. partner. I mean, you we talk talked to too. It's just that I didn't have all the details they had. Yeah. But you know who else really wanted to get there and talk to Sam and talk to Buddy about it was Sam. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe maybe between them they'll they can give some insight as to what everyone was thinking and the next steps are going to be. I mean, I know, I know we got to find out what's going on. All right. I know there's bad stuff going on with that army base. I know that, that some bad, bad things happened as a result of it. 
And, you know, it's not like Eddie not to trust the government. And he didn't trust what was happening at that army base. That's for sure. So he thinks it's tied to what's ha- going to what we're going to see when we get there. Right. So what's and what, Sam, it, what was his play? Convenient... Oh. I was just going to say, you'll probably notice Colette getting a little bit uncomfortable and silent when you talk about not trusting the army or the government and you should trust and whatever, whatever, because, you know, Johnny doesn't know yet about about yeah, what happened yeah. to her. But and Sam, is, if you want to conveniently to enter that scene, if you want to, yeah, uh, that, that would kind of be good timing. Uh, and, and so I presume this is towards the time when the train is about to reach the station. Yeah, I would, I would guess maybe, or maybe I'll see Sam and his family kind of moving through the hallway, get a glance at him through the door. I'll speak of the devil. Yeah, it's probably smile and nod at the, you mm-hmm. all in the room. And kind of poke my head and ask if you're coming. Hey, Sam. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Would it be possible for you to step away from your family? So I just ask you a real quick question. Man, I look at Cheryl. Oh, oh uh, whatever <laughs> mm-hmm. you need, Sam. I'll take uh, I'll take Amos right up to the front of the car. I know he's excited to see the city as we pull in. As am I. I I'm really excited, right. too. You know well, that, right? I know. I'll, I'll just you know poke. I'll be like, Amos, have fun. Enjoy the train, buddy. Well, thank you, Mr. FBI man. I'll be, hey, I'll be right there. Do you still have there, your picture? Honey. Oh, I, I do, I do. It's beautiful. I can't, I can't wait. We're supposed to stay in an authentic Wild West hotel, and I'm gonna hang it up in my room. That wow. sounds amazing. It's, and I'll be like Sam. You got a good kid there, buddy. Oh, don't I? And I kind of <laughs> ruffle his hair and I'll I'll give him a little, you know, fake, fake kick on the on the behind as I send them on their way and just uh, uh, pop into the room and say, how how, how can I help? Uh, so Colette and I were just talking and uh, I've been looking through Eddie's notes and, and just over the whole case and recently and the, the thing that's missing and, and you and I've talked about this. He changed. Right. We know something was going on with him. Uh, he, he usually was such a planner and I knew every time he worked on a case, he had every step planned out three, four steps ahead and he'd have contingencies and the whole nine yards. And I, he never laid out his plan for what he wanted to do once we got, or once he got to uh bloodstone, new bloodstone. And I'm just wondering, did he talk to you about it? Did he give you insight into what he thinks we need to do or he needed to do when he got there? You, you're talking about Eddie? Yeah, I'm talking about Eddie. I know you got to know him a little bit, didn't you? I mean, I got to know a couple of his knuckles once, and then he had some words here and there. Uh, I suppose uh, he may uh, yeah, have had some machinations or plans on what to do here that me, if anything, he probably shared with a uh, buddy. They seem to stick as thieves until he's... He, he... You were talking about it in the parking lot outside of the motel. We were all there, and I don't know why you all wanted to go. I just wanted to go somewhere, but but we well, had a discussion about going to New Bloodstone, and you were going for some reason, and we were going, and we were all going the same place. Yeah, uh, well, it, this goes back a number of years. My time in the war, I had a buddy who warned of some unusual activities up in the town. He came from a friend of mine, Ira. Uh, Newsom and uh, said uh, that he was always worried about the government coming after him and he talked about people disappearing and well, it struck a similar chord with those disappearing in the straits and now all this commotion about the military base and well in my search uh, at the library about this town I come upon this new bloodstone and I figured maybe it's a good way to I don't know call it a lead or or, 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 or man, the intuition here, but uh, maybe it's worth turning over on a couple rocks. No, so it sounds um, like maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, uh, finish your thought. Johnny, so I was just going to say, it sounds. It almost sounds like. Tell me if this makes sense, Sam. Like you and you and Buddy and Eddie, you guys came to maybe a similar conclusion, but you're coming at it from maybe slightly different places. 
So, you know, it's interesting. That's just, you know, Colette, like we were talking about, this is bigger, right? This is bigger than maybe I was even thinking. So if you've got, if you've got another thread, maybe we got to see if these threads connect to each other. Uh, we, I think you're right, Colette. We really got to talk to Buddy. And then we're going to cut to Buddy. And, uh, maybe a closing moment here, Buddy, because uh, we, we got to wrap up. But what's a what's a closing image you can give us? Yeah, so um, it, you would see Buddy um, sitting in the train car um, and, you know, sort of kicking back with a book in his lap, um, the mm-hmm. atlas, big atlas on the floor um, next to him. And he he's sitting there reading this this uh, great novel called The Maltese Falcon. Just uh, having a nice train ride. And with that, we'll close. All right. Oh, that's that's me. <laughs> I forgot. I have responsibilities now. <laughs> I got to stop being buddy. That's gonna do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, until next time, you can find us at underthelibrary.com. Don't forget to check out our other show. It's called Up Your RPG and can be found wherever you get your podcasts. So until next time, for me, for Michael, for Scott, for Rick, for Rain, for Rain, for Wayne, and for Emily, (laughs) thanks so much for joining us. And we'll see you next time under the library. I thought we were making jokes about circus peanuts and pineapple. I do occasionally tell people to listen to this show. Is that a regret? Yes. Slowest runner in the forest gets eaten by the bear. I appreciate it when people point out my shortcomings. I killed Art. (laughs) Second spit take of the night. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah.